Like newborn infants, you must long for the pure spiritual milk, that in him you may grow to salvation. Alleluia. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you came to gather the nations into the peace of God's kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you come in word and sacrament to strengthen us in holiness. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you will come again in glory with salvation for your people. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. God of everlasting mercy, who in the very recurrence of the Paschal Feast kindle the faith of the people you have made your own, increase, we pray, the grace you have bestowed that all may grasp and rightly understand in what font they have been washed, by whose spirit they have been reborn, by whose blood they have been redeemed through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. They devoted themselves to the teaching of the apostles and to the communal life, to the breaking of bread and to the prayers. Awe came upon everyone, and many wonders and signs were done through the apostles. All who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their property and possessions and divide them among all according to each one's need. Every day they devoted themselves to meeting together in the temple area and to breaking bread in their homes. They ate their meals with exultation and sincerity of heart, praising God and enjoying favor with all the people. And every day the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love is everlasting. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love is everlasting. Let the house of Israel say, His mercy endures forever. Let the house of Aaron say, His mercy endures forever. Let those who fear the Lord say, His mercy endures forever. Give, Give thanks, thanks to the Lord, Lord for he is good. good. His, His love, love is everlasting. everlasting. I was hard pressed and was falling, but the Lord helped me. My strength and my courage is the Lord, and he has been my savior. The joyful shout of victory in the tents of the just. Give, Give thanks, thanks to, to the Lord, Lord, for he is good, his, his love is everlasting. The stone which the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. By the Lord has this been done. It is wonderful in our eyes. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us be glad and rejoice in it. Give, Give thanks, thanks to the Lord, Lord for he is good, his love, and love is everlasting. everlasting. <clears throat> A 
reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in his great mercy gave us a new birth to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you, who by the power of God are safeguarded through faith to a salvation that is ready to be revealed in the final time. In this you rejoice, although now for a little while you may have to suffer through various trials, so that the genuineness of your faith, more precious than gold that is perishable, even though tested by fire, may prove to be for praise, glory, and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Although you have not seen him, you love him. Even though you do not see him now, yet believe in him, you rejoice with an indescribable and glorious joy as you attain the goal of your faith, the salvation of your souls. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the Lord be in your heart and on your lips that you may proclaim his gospel worthily and well in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. You believe in me, Thomas, because you have seen me, says the Lord. Blessed are they who have not seen me, but still believe. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the doors were locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. Whose sins you forgive are forgiven them, and whose sins you retain are retained. Thomas, called Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples said to him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger into the nail marks, and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. Now a week later, his disciples were again inside, and Thomas was with them. Jesus came, although the doors were locked, and stood in their midst and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands, and bring your hand and put it into my side. And do not be unbelieving, but believe. Thomas answered and said to him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, have you come to believe because you have just seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and have believed. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples that are not written in this book, but these are written that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that through this belief you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ.
Jesus breathes on the apostles, imparting to them the Holy Spirit, giving them the power to forgive sins, as he says. But see what else this this divine breath, the giving of the Holy Spirit, accomplishes. For one thing, it knits the church together into one body. It joins together, as St. Luke says in the first reading, all who believed. Luke goes on to describe the members sharing among themselves their goods. Their goods, both material and spiritual. They freely give of them, moved by love, moved by that Holy Spirit. So it's fitting that this reading should follow upon Easter Sunday. For what moved the believers to act in this way, but the realization that they had no right to salvation, that they did not deserve to be saved from sin by the water of baptism and by the shedding of the blood of Jesus, but they were given it anyway. We might say that that community of believers makes the psalmist's prayer today their own. I was hard pressed, I was falling, but the Lord came to help me, who is my strength, my savior. So realizing this, they go and do likewise for others. And in this way, they enact the divine mercy in their lives. I think we tend often to, to, to conceive of mercy as, as a response or as a reaction. A sin is committed and pardon is then given. A need is spoken and someone supplies what is needed. An injury is suffered or a sickness, and then healing is brought in response to that injury, to that sickness. But mercy can also be be done. Mercy can be carried out in advance, in anticipation. Again, because the Holy Spirit and the teaching of the apostles makes of the faithful one body. The Catechism points out to us that there is no such thing as a private sin. That even the most hidden of wrongs is, first of all, not hidden from God. But further still, such a, any kind of wrong, any kind of sin is a, is a kind of blemish on the body of the faithful. That mars the beauty of the whole. Again, we might think of it as, as something like the opposite of of what's done in the first reading. The community of believers share their goods with the whole church. So we might think of a a fault or a sin or an offense as, as in some way holding something back, depriving the body of some good that belongs to it, even if it's an invisible or an immaterial something. But while there are no private sins, it's just a true that there's, there's no private goodness. And perhaps this may be helpful for us to recall now, if we're feeling alone or isolated lately. There's no private goodness, there's no private virtue, but rather the goodness and the holiness of any one member of the body is to the benefit of others, to the benefit of all. The Trappist monk, Thomas Merton, some of his, his journals of life in the, in, the, uh, in the Trappist monastery that he lived in in Kentucky, some of his journals have been published. And he writes in one place of, of a sleepless night, 
it seems that he suffered from the occasional sleepless night in his life as a monk, and he writes of it as a kind of, a kind of intercessory offering. This is what his journal entry says. You lie there alone in the dark, and your bed becomes an altar. And outside in the world, perhaps someone is unexpectedly sorry for something he has done and finds himself able to pray. That's the classic, uh, the classic example of, of offering, offering up one's sufferings for others. I know that I myself have had some sleepless nights in the last few weeks. And possibly many of you hearing me have also. And I love this insight of, of Merton. This way of making good use even of a sleepless night to offer it for total strangers. For whoever out there in the world needs it. And of course, just now, at this time, we're also being asked in these unusual and unfamiliar ways to have mercy. And not only for, for religious, we might say, but also for, for natural or for, for civic reasons. To have mercy on total strangers. And again, it's a kind of it's a kind of mercy in anticipation. In this case, it's not necessarily to heal an injury, not necessarily to restore any loss, but to keep the injury from happening in the first place, to keep complete strangers from, from getting sick in the first place by staying put. To keep those who work in medicine from becoming even more overwhelmed. To endure, yes, a kind of, a kind of confinement. But then Merton lived in a room called a cell. To endure our own anxiety, like Merton in his sleepless nights. to live a mercy that, that not only responds, but anticipates. Like the mercy of Jesus himself anticipates. To claim nothing as my own. To claim nothing as our own, not our sleep and not our fatigue, not our anxiety. Not even our freedom of movement, none of these now are our own. So we're asked freely to offer them. As our Lord poured out water and blood to save us. That community of believers described in the first reading, they realized Jesus had offered himself before they knew him. As it says in the second reading, as St. Peter says in the second reading, you have not seen him, but you love him. They knew Jesus had offered himself before they knew him, before they even knew they needed a savior, perhaps. He had offered himself in anticipation of their need. In this way, he had mercy on them. They never met him on earth. They were among those like ourselves who believed even though they had not seen. In this way, they experienced his mercy. And they went on to do likewise for others. Perhaps not many of us are able to sell excess property, as Acts says, and to give the proceeds away. But then in a sense, we can purchase, as it were, 
at the price of our prayer and our good works, at the price even of our, of our tribulations and trials, we can purchase a share in God's favor and lay it at the feet of the apostles. Lay it at the feet of the Lord and say, let this grace be distributed to whoever in the world is in need of the divine mercy. Let us profess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. We offer now our prayers of intercession. For the church throughout the world, as we continue to proclaim the resurrection of Jesus from the dead, that the community will be bold and strong to proclaim the message everywhere for the salvation and healing of all, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That our parish of St. Rose Philippine Duchenne will, under her example, tirelessly proclaim the gospel and the resurrection of Christ to all in our area, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For healing throughout the world from the pandemic, for a relenting of sickness and deaths, and for safety for those most vulnerable, and for our medical servants and those who serve us in groceries and other services, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all students and their families, that the interruption to their school year will not end their learning and growth, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those of our parish who feel especially alone at this time, that they will experience the presence of the risen Lord, and for all in our parish who are sick or serving the needs of ailing loved ones, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for the beloved deceased of our parish and of our families, may they know and enjoy full life among the saved and the risen Jesus, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God of mercy, hear the prayers of your church and answer us according to your most holy will, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. By the mystery of this water and wine may become to share in the divinity of Christ and humble himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Humble spirit and contrite heart, may we be accepted by you alone, and may our sacrifice and this faith please be pleasing to you, Lord God. Wash me, Lord, from my iniquities and cleanse me.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the oblations of your people, that renewed by confession of your name and by baptism, they may attain unending happiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but on this day above all to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb, who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying he has destroyed our death, and by rising restored our life. Therefore overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord God, God of hosts, hosts heaven and earth are, are full of your glory. glory. Hosanna God in the highest. highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Lord. Hosanna God in the highest. highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit graciously make holy, these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and, one, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we claim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Rose Philippine de Chen, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, 
advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Robert, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom come, come thy will be done, done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, you, you take, take away, away the sins, sins of the world, world. Have, have mercy on us. us. Lamb of God, you take, take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. May the receiving of your body and blood, Lord Jesus, rise us up anew to judgment and condemnation through your loving mercy. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy, worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that our reception of this Paschal Sacrament may have a continuing effect in our minds and hearts through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia. We're observing Divine Mercy Sunday today, of course. So we begin with the, the prayer blessing the image of Divine Mercy. Almighty and Eternal Father, in your goodness, bless and sanctify this image of the Divine Mercy of your dearly beloved Son, which has been fashioned to reveal to us the great love of our crucified and risen Savior. Help us recall to our minds the streams of blood and water that had gushed forth from his pierced heart to be for us a continuous fount of mercy. Grant all who invoke your mercy with this image before their eyes the grace of true repentance, pardon, and peace. Shield them from every danger to soul and body in this life. Through this image, may your divine mercy triumph over all the powers of evil May all who venerate this image never perish. May it be their joy in life, their hope in death, and their glory in eternity forever and ever. This we ask through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Now I invite all to join together in praying the following prayers. We begin with the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. We now pray the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. And now I invite all to repeat the inv this invocation. Merciful Jesus, I trust in you. Merciful Jesus, I trust in you. Go now in thanksgiving for God's mercy and be merciful to others. Merciful 